This is episode 25 for the World Builders Anvil. Today's topic, fantasy cultural traits. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Welcome back. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram, your host as always for the World Builders Anvil. And this is my episode on fantasy cultural traits. Now this should be a little quicker than some of the other ones I've done. And really, if I was being true to it, I would talk about racial traits first. Because that's where I start with traits, is from a racial perspective. However, there'll just be a few quick points for this episode. As always, please remember to subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. Those are all very important tasks to help other people find us and to help the show grow. So, when I talk about fantasy cultural traits, I'm talking about certain traits that are common to a cultural group. And this is not appearance. That is, I deal with that separately. However, it's certain traits that are very, very common. I would say like 90% of the people have this trait specifically. 5% of the people in the culture group will have it to an exceptional level. And 5% won't have it. You know, somewhere around that bell curve. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, when I talk about cultural traits, I mean it Where does the culture group deviate from the racial group? So if everyone in the racial group for a certain culture has super strength, I don't list it as a cultural trait. It's an implied trait. And maybe I should list it there because I might not think to look to the race. However, um, I, I don't list it in both places. It's one of the few times racial supersedes culture or state. But I break these down into a few different categories. And once again, this is sort of derived from me being a GURPS player for a long time. GURPS has things called advantages and disadvantages. And traits to me are a little bit larger than that. And if you are familiar with other games, they might have a similarly named thing in there. If you're strictly a writer, you might not be quite so familiar with it. But when I talk about traits from a cultural perspective, or from any perspective, the thing I look at are first physical. Physical are things that are either good or bad for the race that affects, that affects their cultural makeup. So let's say humans don't have a super strength bonus, but this group of humans lives in an area where strength is very, very important. So the humans that have survived there have a lot of physical strength. That would become a cultural trait. Or it could be the other way around where strength is so unimportant where they're at, maybe they're, they're weak as a culture in comparison to the race. So it's anything, when I talk about physical, it's anything that affects the motor movements of a culture. And a lot of times my cultures will have no physical traits. This is one that is usually more of a racial thing. However, it, it can affect especially smaller cultures. The next thing I look at, which once again is usually going to be more of a racial trait or a racial trait group, would be mental traits. And once again, are you smarter or less intelligent? If magic derives from mental prowess or psionics, those kind of things would fall into this part of the cultural group. They might fall under a different part as well, too. However, if they're based on mind power, the power of your ability to think, it will come from this. And that might be something like they're quick to adapt. And maybe they're just an area with really bad weather patterns and they're forced to go from drought to to flooding. That will force them to adapt in that manner a lot. And I personally think, and I could be wrong, that cultures that are in areas that have radical shifts in weather, especially if they're unpredictable, or more adaptable than cultures who are in a place that have more pleasant weather. Or maybe not even more pleasant, but more consistent weather. Once again, if it affects the mind, it is a mental trait. Or I, I'll track it as a mental trait. 
The next thing I want to talk about are social trait groups. These are very common for cultural groups. The next thing I'm going to look at is social traits. And social traits are defined as their social interactions, either advantages or disadvantages, where they give a trait group actual skill or interaction bonus with people. And sometimes it's just a, a derived thing. So, for example, uh, one that would affect would be appearance. You know, think of the classic elf trope. Whether or not you want to call it a trope, it's really unimportant. When I talk about elves being, on average, pretty, that would be a racial trait for prettiness, which would fall under social, because it would change their interaction. But in the same way that happens, uh, let's say you have a very unique, exotic culture sort of wrapped in an area with different cultures. They're going to have an appearance modifier with the other cultures around them, even if they're the same race. So let's say everyone around them has dark hair and brown eyes, and these people all have pink hair with green eyes. The other cultures are going to have an interaction with them based off of that hair color and that eye color. They might think it's pretty or they might think it's ugly. Uh, either way, that will be a social trait. And it could go beyond that. So if your culture has a tendency to show hospitality to people they don't know, that will grow in the reputation of the culture and affect the way other cultures will think of them. And once it becomes very common in the culture, it becomes a social trait. The next thing I like to think of are vocational traits. So if you have a group that lives in a series of islands, they probably are very proficient at fishing. And maybe have no ability towards agriculture if the islands they live on don't support agriculture. I will also look at vocational traits. So they're farmers, they're fishermen, they're warriors, they're scholars, they're mages. Whatever that cultural, that culture tends towards. When I say tend towards, when it comes to a trait, once again, it's that 90% I'm looking for. If 90% of the people are fishermen, it becomes a trait. And people will all have skill in fishermen. They will all know something about fishing. Even if their job is to be a scholar in a society that's dominated by fishermen, they will still know how to fish because that is important to the culture. If it becomes central to the culture, it becomes a cultural trait. Same way Sparta, you think of warriors because, you know, you're stripped from your family at birth. You're raised in the barracks. You are a warrior. You will come back either holding your shield or on it. That is a warrior culture. And warrior cultures, once again, not everyone will be a warrior in that culture, but everyone will be, it will, it will be central to everyone's life in that culture. Allies and enemies. These are traits I do not use for races very often. However, for cultures, this is the most common one. And this goes back to my other podcast on cultural relations. This is really a way to describe it through traits. So a cultural enmity is generations worth of bad relations with your other neighbors, whether they're a state, whether they are a race in different cultures, or whether they're an empire, it does not matter. If your culture reacts negatively or positively to them or vice versa, that is a trait for the culture. Now, like I said, this is a, Pretty quick one. There are many things. Genius. Maybe everyone's a genius in the culture. That's unlikely. That would be a cultural trait. But hey, your world, your rules. But this is a, a short episode just going over this idea of traits. There are many, many more traits than I have here. Any adjective can almost be categorized in one of these categories. If not, go with your own categories. Let me know what they are. I'd be interested to hear the kinds of traits that you assign towards cultures or races or countries. The rating for this episode is basic. You have to know the reality of your culture. And, and this is a very specific thing that if it's common for your culture to be strong and you have a weak character from that culture who's the lead in your book or is a the character that you play in the game, what is the reaction of everyone else around them? Is it positive or negative? That's going to be answered in the, in the cultural norms. But uh, you have to know when the people deviate from the traits. 
or what they're more more than likely to be good at because of just of who they are, how they were raised, the specializations they needed to survive. The world building task for the day. List your main culture's traits. Pretty simple. Go through, take your main culture, and list out any traits they have. And once again, I have a very high threshold, so you're not going to see a lot of these outside of the ally slash enemies for a culture. And even typically once states become more important than cultures, um, that becomes more a derivative of the state than of the culture itself. But up through tribal times, I still consider a cultural thing. But just list any traits, if any. And if there's not, that says something. And not necessarily positive or negative, but it says something about the culture. The real world task for the day. Avoid list articles that are presented as galleries. Now, these might be wonderful for SEO, but they waste your time. Galleries are typically slow to load. A lot of times they don't even work very good on mobile. Some of them do now, but a lot of them don't. They're hard to read. It's annoying. Uh, look for your list that will list them down. And maybe there's a couple pages in there. But if you have 77 things to make your life better, don't make 77 different gallery posts for people to have to read. And if you come up to a page like that, just exit out. Don't read them unless you really, really want to know the information because you're wasting, you know, an extra couple seconds per click at least. So don't waste your time. Focus on non-gallery posts if it's a list. Now, if there's a visual component important, galleries are great. But when it's, you know, a behavioral thing, it's a poor presentation that they're doing for SEO purposes. Don't play into it. Skip the post and go to someone else's website. The T's. Racial makeup of your culture. Oh, yeah. And as always, make sure to go to Garduel.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com for the show notes. It'll be under Podcasting, World Builders, and That's a great place to get all of the information from the episode that you've just listened to and to see all the resources that we've talked about in this episode. Thanks for joining us this episode of the World Builders Anvil. Please be sure to rate and review us in iTunes and please help get the word out to your friends about our show. And join me, Jeffrey W. Ingram at Garduel.com to see the progress of my world and learn why I made the choices I did. And please contact me and let me know the topics you would love to hear in the future. Now strike, why the myth rolls high.